You never let your weapon go beyond arm's reach, ever. I did. And as I look over, over the side of the way, I see these fucking claws come over. And they're coming down the web. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then this head comes over. Huge head. It's a, a, a fucking bear. Welcome back to Inspire Change with Jordan Mulligan. And today's episode is with the amazing Billy Billingham. You might know him from SAS Who Dares Wins. Today's episode was powered and sponsored by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food with everything that your body needs. Go to the link in the description where you can find exclusive offers. Thank you to Huel for supporting the podcast. Let's dive into the episode. So when I was an instructor, just out of a quick interest, I used to teach situation awareness, you know, understanding what is different around you. So you pick up on things early. And what I used to do in Brunei, all the students had come down to the jungle school. And just before they got in there, I would go about three seats back and have a shit, go and do a big dump and leave it. Don't say anything. And as the students come in, I'll be pretending to set up my fucking drops what I was going to talk about. And I can, can hear them all going, fucking hell, so many shit in the school house. You know, because they're petrified of you as a DS. Anyway, so then I turn around after a bit and I go, what's going on? What's wrong? And then somebody got staff. Um, Someone's had a shit in the schoolhouse. I went, you fucking kidding me? No stuff is here. I went, where? Okay, everybody move forward. We'll deal with that at the end. Anyway, then I did this talking about situational awareness and understanding, you know, like tracking and knowing the, your environment and why. So, and then at the end of it, I go, right, where's that shit? And he went, stop. It's gone. And basically what happens in the jungle, fucking dung beetles oh, wow. come in, take, break up and take it away. And the relevance of the story is this. So if you're following up an enemy, the first thing you want to do, get into the camp. If there's no one in there, you want to get in quickly, get to the toilet. If you get in the toilet, shit in that pit, it means you're within 20 minutes of them. And it's still, that's it. I like to do my stories like, you know, but I, I just saw it there and I just, it just makes me fucking laugh. That's amazing. I, I've got like a few questions. Yeah, yeah. Over, but I, I'm really interested. What, what other things are there, marker points? Like, um, the, uh, I mean, that's such a small thing. How many different little pieces of knowledge like that do you know that help you? Oh, I mean, all my stuff I do that way because, you know, you walk away from something that will always remind you of why you're doing it. You know, when you're teaching somebody a skill, if it's just the bare bullet points and that's the skill, some people will get it, but you'll always, they, those students will always think back to that turd and go, fucking, what did I learn for? Actually, the relevance of time and fucking, and also, from the turd, you know, you can tell whether it's a European person, you can tell whether they're eating healthy. There's so much information, which you wouldn't, you'd never fucking, mm. you know. But the, and they walk away with a hell of a lot of knowledge. Fucking one of the things, check the fucking toilet. Is there toilet paper there? Then they're probably Westerners, because only Westerners wipe their ass. Is there fucking, you know, does it, is it a solid poop? Firstly, you know that it's within 20 minutes, in a jungle environment, that is. Um, that's one, and the other one I used to teach them, the same, same lesson was, Animals don't fucking, you know, you, you'll always see a column of ants, yeah? And fucking blokes, if they, it's because they're lazy, they'll push through it and break the column. If you break the column again, that can take, I used to time, I don't know what time is, it'd be about 18 minutes before that column realigns itself and you can still see a break in it. And again, so as you come along, you've seen that, you go, right, we are within 18 minutes, the enemy ain't that far away. God. Or you've left fucking sign that tells the enemy how close yeah. to us they are. Little things like that and stepping over logs. Animals don't fucking scrape logs. If there's a little bit of a scrape on a log that's fallen across the track, it's a fucking human. I mean, but that's so tiny, the ant thing, because I'm thinking, yeah. I, I would be like, oh, someone's broke that, someone's spit yeah. through here at some point, but then you're getting the information of the time that they were coming yeah. as well. Because obviously you, you test it. Yeah. In all those environments, you, you did break it and then time it, see how long it does it, and then do it again a bit for, yeah. Does everyone do that? Is that just more no, no, that, that's what I did. Yeah. I've never been taught that. I, don't, I, I did it because I was fucking bored one day and I did that and I went, timed it. Same as a turd. I did. The, I had a turd. I had a fucking shit because you have to in the jungle. You know, yeah. I had a good old country shit and I sat there and I watched the dung. And what happens with the dung beetles? It's, it's a military precision fucking off. The first dung beetle will come in and it won't land on it. It'll f fly around it. Mm, buzzing it. And it's like it's on the radio going, it's, it's on the radio. <laughs> Lads, I found it. I found the enemy camp. Fucking send the next four in. And then three or four dung beetles are coming behind it, boom, in, and they're breaking it up. And then the one that's like doing the surveillance will land, he'll take the last bit and they're off. It's brilliant. That's the sort of shit. And, 
And being in the jungle as well, you know, I, I don't know why I'm going on about this, but I, I did love it. Um, when you get into the jungle, never been in the jungle before, I don't know if you've been in the jungle, no. it's fucking horrendous. Yeah. People don't realise how noisy it is. It's claustrophobic and it's like, it's like somebody's stand in the middle of Tesco's car park and set every car alarm off at the same time. There's all these, all these fucking noises and you're like, what the fuck? And then when you've been in the jungle for a while and you start to smell like the jungle, that's why it's important not to wash, not to shave, all that shit. You start to smell like it. The creatures get used to you and they get used to you being in that area. So then once you've settled in, all you, the, the job's done for you. Any enemy, anybody coming towards you, that noise will kick off again. And you will know somebody's coming close. And they don't do it for animals. It's only when there's human interference. It's just little things that I don't know why. It, it, it's from a jungle nose when I was teaching these students out in the jungle. No, but I think it's so interesting because it's something that, you know, as normies don't think of at all. Because yeah. when I was reading the book, there was a moment where I think you was taking a film crew through the jungle or something like that. And the guy, the, one of the producers was like, you were saying, we need to get a move on quick. We're two yeah. kilometers away from, and he was like, it's two kilometers, Billy. What are you yeah. complaining about? And you, I think you uh, said it's something like two kilometers in the jungle is like, 10, 15 kilometers or yeah. something. In, I'll cross normal land, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, in terms of terrains and stuff like that, like how how much did you have to research and, you know, become, uh, adapt to- you, you have to totally, you have to totally f in, embed yourself in the jungle. You have to- Would you say the jungle is one of the toughest? Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's one of the toughest in terms of, it's forgiving. Because other than if you get bitten or something drops on you or f everyone wants to bite you and sting you, you know, you're gonna fucking suffer, but you can live longer because there's, there is things to, you can find things to eat. They're generally water, as opposed to the Arctic. The Arctic's the most unforgiving environment ever. You know, if you leave your fucking glove off for more than a couple of minutes, you're gonna lose your fingernail. You're gonna lose the tips of your fingers. You will die and you don't get a second chance in, in, the, um, in the Arctic. But in the jungle, the thing about the jungle is it, it fucks your body, your mind. Because you know, you, you people become paranoid of it. You, you, visually, you cut, everything looks the same. It's so easy to get disoriented. You can literally, be, I'd be following a patrol. Is another a skill I used to learn. Of the morning, I'd meet the patrol, give them a brief, show them where they're going, make sure they know where. They're, let them go, and I'd hang back and I'd try and skirt around them and follow them. And you could literally, I fucking, I'd be like that. Just check my map myself. Get up. I go, fuck, which way have they gone? Because it's within minutes, you just disappeared into the broccoli. And then you could see a bit of a track there and walk down. As soon as you felt a, a, a web in your face, they obviously not gone that way. Down that one, no, no a web in your face. No one's got, this is clear, they're down, they're gone this way. And then boom, for your catch up with them. You know, it's little things like that and you're fucking hard to go on like that because you think, fucking hell, I'm going to lose my jungle, my patrol in the jungle. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. Today's video was sponsored by Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food with everything that your body needs. I also have just started recently using Huel's Daily Greens. Please go check the link in the description for the best greens on the market, in my opinion. They taste amazing and they have everything that your body needs. Find exclusive offers down below with the link. Thank you to Huel for sponsoring the podcast. And was it, was it those small things that would separate people in the jungle? Like, you know, you're talking about all these tiny little things. Yeah, it, it, to be good. You... Yeah, what does it take? What would it take to, you know, to be... Uh, you've I just in the jungle. You've just got to embrace it. You've got to fucking, that saying, which I don't really like saying, but it's true. You've got to become comfortable with being uncomfortable because the jungle is uncomfortable. You are wet, sweating all day long, you know, around your neck and in everywhere's itching and gets sore quite quick. You stink a piss. You get that, the ammonia in your, in your sweat and uh, you just got to get used to it. And get you know, putting your wet kit on in the morning while it's still dark and there's leeches in there, there's things fucking crawling about. You've just got to accept it and go, you know what, fuck it. Enjoy it. And the smells, the noises, I love it. It's to me, it's therapeutic. If I fucking ever want to decompress, I'll go in the fucking jungle. When I first went in the jungle, I fucking hated it. It was petrifying, honestly. But but I just embraced it. I thought, I'm here. I ain't going nowhere else. I've got to get I've got to get used to it. That's some mindset shit, the mindset shit there. Yeah, well, that's, that was me. I was like a young fucking kid. First time I went in the jungle, you know, and I, I ne the only jungle I'd ever seen was on fucking Tarzan. I'm expecting fucking people in loincloths swinging about and fucking elephants, and he was fucking hideous. There was snakes everywhere, there's things fucking... I remember sitting down for a shit. Everything revolves around a shit with me, unfortunately. <laughs>
I fucking walked. <laughs> I was on patrol. And I needed a shit. So the patrol stops. Gets out. I go. I see. Oh, there's a fucking uh, half a tr uh, tree there. Fallen tree. Fucking rotten fucking tree. So I go and have a shit next to it. And as I'm having a shit on like that, and I see this tree's got a set of eyes. It was a fucking boa, all curled up. And this fucking thing is like that, just looking, and I'm like that. Oh, like, I'm like. <laughs> Another shit story in, in, in Brunei, when I was a DS on sele SAS selection, patrols going off, they're doing this stuff, they're doing recce. I go for a shit. And it's in the web, in the web of a, what they call a cathedral tree. They're fucking massive, beautiful things. Oh, I'm sat having a shit. I've let me, and I've got live rounds on my weapon. I leave my weapon against say, you never let your weapon go beyond arm's reach, ever. I did. I'm having a shit. And always, as I'm on the shit, I hear this. And I think, fucking hell, they're coming back, the lads are coming back. And as I look over, over the side of the way, I see these fucking claws come over. And they're coming down the web. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then this head comes over, huge head. It's a, uh, what are they called? Sun kiss bear, a fucking bear. And this thing just sticks his head over, sees me, I'm like, oh, and ah! the bear goes, ah! <laughs> it runs up the tree. I was like trying to get to my weapon, but yeah. Anyway, they're the funny stories. I spent all night on the fucking roof, watching everywhere waiting. And I'm thinking, fuck me, I'm in a situation I don't want to be in here. And this guy, he's only a small guy, by the way, but he's got two big henchmen with him, and they're big dudes. I'm absolutely shitting myself, to be honest. So I'm there on the roof all night. I've got fucking bricks, I've got fucking machete, I've got all sorts of shit. I thought he's fucking coming, he's getting it, I'm gonna kill this guy. <laughs>